Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief screencast on the convexity adjustment and its application to a euro dollar futures contract. Yesterday I talked about a key difference between a futures contract and a forward contract. The key difference is that the futures contract, as it trades on an exchange, has a margin account and experiences daily settlement. The forward contract does not. This daily settlement creates a price difference and in the case of the euro dollar futures contract a difference in the rates that increasingly matters over longer maturities and may not matter at short maturities. So the holder of the euro dollar futures contract that contract is marked to market on a daily basis and that means as the value of that contract goes up there may be excess cash in the margin account and as the value of that contract goes down, there may be margin calls. This creates daily cash volatility for the holder of the futures contract that the holder of the forward rate contract does not experience. This daily volatility is slightly more risk and implies that the futures rate ought to be higher. And so we can use an approximation, and there are several, this is the Ho and Lee approximation following John Hull for my FRM candidate customers where we're approximating the difference by saying that the forward rate is equal to the euro dollar futures rate minus this convexity adjustment. One half the variance of the change in the short term interest rate multiplied by T1 multiplied by T2 or the product of T1 and T2. T1 is the time to delivery of the euro dollar futures contract and then T2 is always going to be 90 days later because the euro dollar futures contract refers to a 90 day LIBOR interest rate. So now I'll use John Hull's actual example just to show you the application of this and so first the assumption is that we have an 8 year euro dollar futures quote of 94 that means that the implied LIBOR rate on that futures contract is 1 minus 94 or 6%. So the 6% is an annualized rate. However, it's compounded with the frequency of quarterly compounding or the compound frequency is quarterly. So the first thing that John Hall does is convert that quarterly frequency into continuous compounding. So if you're an FRM, candidate I hope you know how to do this we take the natural log of 1 plus that quarterly rate since it's a quarterly rate I'm going to divide by 4 and then I'm going to multiply by 365 over 90 and I'm going to get 6.04 so that's still the implied annualized LIBOR rate for a quote of 94 but it's now on a continuously compounded frequency. So that's the futures rate right here in blue. Now I'm going to subtract the convexity adjustment. I need another assumption. I'll assume the volatility of the change in the short rate is 1.2%. And then delivery is in eight years. So that's T1. And then T2 is going to be eight plus three months or 90 days. So that's 8.25 and so now I can apply the formula by taking the futures rate and subtracting one half multiplied by the volatility but I want I need the variance so I'm gonna square it multiplied by eight years to delivery multiplied by 8 plus 3 more months. And in inputting that formula, I've now used the futures rate of 6.04% and subtracted the small convexity adjustment. And that gives me an implied forward rate of 5.563. And as we said, we expect the forward rate to be smaller by the difference of this convexity adjustment because the forward rate does not have the daily settlement and therefore does not have that 
vo increased volatility due to the daily settlement. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.